welcome to jasonnewland.com. My name is Jason Newland and this is Jason's Bedtime Story Times. And uh, please only listen to this when you can safely close your eyes. Now... I'm going to read a story, it's an English fairy tale from a long, long, long time. Very old, very old, very old. And it's called Jack and His Golden Snuff Box. You got it right, it's called Jack and His Golden Snuff Box. <laughs> now, I don't know this story, so I'm reading it for the first time. So... And according to this, it's, it's a fairly long story, but, you know, please enjoy. And I take no responsibility for the content at all. Mm. Once upon a time, and a very good time it was, though it was neither in my time nor in your time nor in anyone else's time. There was an old man and an old woman and they had one son and they lived in a great forest. That was all one sentence. And their son never saw any other people in his life but he knew that there were, <laughs> that there were more in the world besides his father and mother because he had lots of books and he used to read every day about them so he never ever saw another person can you believe that wow what a lucky boy and when he read about some pretty young women he used to go mad to see some of them till one day when his father was out cutting wood he told his mother that he wished to go away to look for his living in some other country and to see some other people besides them too. I wonder how that conversation went. I really like you both, but I'm fed up looking at you. I need to see another person. Uh, and uh, And he said... I see nothing at all here but great trees around me. And if I stay here, maybe I shall go mad before I see anything. The young man's father was out all this time. When this talk was going on between him and his poor old mother, the old woman begins by saying to her son, before leaving. Well, well, my poor boy, if you want to go, you better go, hadn't you? And God be with you. And the old woman fought for the best when she said that. But stop a bit before you go. Mm. Which would you like best for me to make you? Huh? Huh? A little cake and bless you. Or a big cake and curse you. Dear, dear, said he. Make me a big cake. Maybe I shall be hungry on the road. Why would she want to curse him? That's a really weird thing to say, isn't it? Could you imagine that? It's so, oh, Mum, I'm, you know, I'm going to head out. There ain't no work around here. I'm going to try and get a job. I'm going to have to tra you know, travel out and, uh, you know, try and, you know, live a life and see what I can do for myself, you know. Uh, are you okay with that? That's fine, darling. Uh, would you like me to make you a cake and wish you well or make you a bigger one 
and hope that everything goes really badly for you. No, it doesn't make sense. She wasn't sweet at all, was she, really? Anyway, make me a big cake. The old woman made the big cake and she went on top of the house and she cursed him as far as she could see him. <laughs> this isn't a good start to a story, is it? I mean, I realised back it's long enough ago that maybe they didn't have a name for her particular condition. Um, he presently meets with his father and the old man says to him, where are you going, my poor boy? When the son told the father the same tale as he told his mother, Well, said his father, I'm sorry to see you going away, but if you've made your mind to go, it's better for you to go. Hmm. The poor lad had not gone far when his father called him back, and the old man drew out his pocket a golden snuff box and said to him here take this little box and put it in your pocket and be sure not to open it until you are near your death <laughs> but dad i'm coming back i'm not <laughs> i'm not going away forever he's, he's only going to try and find a job so well, we'll leave, i'm now leaving forever uh can you curse me please mum and give me something to open when I die, please, Dad. Thanks. Yeah, lovely. I was like, what? Anyway. Poor Jack went off the road. He went up the road and left. And he walked till he was tired and hungry. For he had eaten all of his cake upon the road. A bit of a greedy lad, wasn't he? But then we don't really know how big the cake was. Because if the small cake might have been a cupcake which sometimes, depending who's watching you, can be just one mouthful, can't it? Maybe not if you're in a, you know, in public, you might sure dis decide to break it into bits and, hey, take a nibble. But if no one's around, just squash it in your face. <clears throat> Maybe. Perhaps he shouldn't. Perhaps he did. Anyway, and by this time of night was upon him, so he could... He was hungry and he could hardly see his way before him because it was so dark. But he could see a light a long way before him. It's just So he couldn't see before him, but he could see a light. So he could see before him, but not really. He could see a light, though, in the distance. And he headed towards it. He found the back door and knocked it in. I skip right through to it, doesn't say, oh, oh, he found a house. No. So the light is the big light with a door. With the back door. Because all lights have a back door. My light bulb, back door. Every light, back door. Get on with it, okay. He found the back door and knocked at it. Till one of the maid servants came and asked him what he wanted. He said, So you're telling me, all his life, he's never seen another person, but all he ever had to do was just walk up the end of the road. The time it takes to eat a cake. And there's people there. Now that is a sheltered life. He said that night was on him and he wanted to get some place to sleep. The maidservant called him into the fire. Called him into the fire. Um, I guess he wasn't actually standing in the fire. He said, come on. It was more um, towards the fire to get warm. And gave him plenty to eat. Good meat and bread and beer. Good meat and bread and beer. And as he was eating his food by the fire, there came the young lady to look at him. And she loved him well and he loved her. They really fast track this, don't they? Can you imagine that? Haven't seen a person your whole life. Get a big cake. Walk up the road eating it. You find a light with a door in it. And there's a lady in there. And you both fall in love by the fireplace. Whilst eating, eating good meat, bread and beer. So they loved each other instantly. As you do. And the young lady ran to tell her father. 
and said there was a pretty young man in the back kitchen and immediately the gentleman came to see him and questioned him and asked what work he could do. Jack said to the silly fellow uh, that he could do anything. He meant that he could do any foolish bit of work but that would be wanting about the house. So he didn't really mean he could do anything. Well, said the gentleman to him, if you can do anything at eight o'clock in the morning, I have a great lake and some of the largest man of war vessels sailing before my mansion, and one of the largest vessels must fire a royal salute, and the last round must break the leg of the bed where my young daughter is sleeping, and if you don't do that, you will have to forfeit your life. Yeah, all right then, said Jack, and away he went to his bed, said his prayers quietly, and slept till it was nearly eight o'clock, and he had hardly any time to think what he was to do, till all of a sudden he remembered about the little golden box that his father gave him. And he said to himself, well, okay, well, well, I never was much, I was, never was so near my death as I am now. And then he felt in his pocket and had a little rummage around and he drew the little box out. And when he opened it, out there popped three little red men. Up till now, I was really on board. I'll be honest with you, I was on board with everything that was going on. Now it seems a bit silly. A little bit far-fetched. Three little red men. Okay, let's just, just stay with it. Uh, where are we? And asked Jack, What is your will with us? Well, said Sir Jack, I want a great lake and uh, some of the largest men of all vessels in the world before this mansion and one of the largest vessels to fire a royal salute, and the last round to break one of the legs of the bed where this young lady is sleeping. All right? Hmm. OK, said the little men. Go to sleep. So Jack did. He said, went back to work, went back to sleep. Um... He'd hardly tried to bring the words out of his mouth to tell the little men what to do, but what when it's yeah, what it struck at eight o'clock. When a clock went eight, you know, went to eight, didn't go eight. He went, it's eight o'clock. You know, it, you know, it, ding ding, whatever. When bang, bang went one of the large man of war vessels, and it made. Jack jump out of bed to look through the window and I can assure you it was a wonderful sight for him to see. After being so long with his father and a mother living in a wood. By this time Jack dressed himself and said his prayers and came down laughing for he was proud, ever so proud, because the thing was done so well. The gentleman comes to him and says to him, Well, my young man, I, I must say that you are very, very clever indeed. Come and have some breakfast. And the gentleman, gentleman then tells him, Now, there are two more things you have to do. Then you shall have my daughter in marriage. Oh, really? Jack gets his breakfast and has a good squint at the young lady. Um, and they look at each other and he thinks, is he really worth all this hassle? Um, and he said, ah, oh, well, I don't really know. I've got nothing to compare her to, have I? And I imagine all women have got four legs. So the another thing that the gentleman told him to do was to fell all of the green trees for miles around by eight o'clock in the morning 
and to make my long story short it was done and that's a big missing bit isn't it I want to hear about the trees anyway doesn't want to tell us about trees it was done and it pleased the gentleman well the gentleman said to him the other day the other the other thing you have to do and it was the last thing you must get me a great castle standing on twelve golden pillars and there must come regiments of soldiers and go through their drill at eight o'clock the commanding officer must say shoulder up oh, all right all right said jack when the third and last morning came the third great feat was finished and he had the young daughter in marriage but oh dear there is worse yet to come the gentleman now makes a large hunting party And invites all the gentlemen around the country to it and to see the castle as well and by this time Jack has a beautiful horse and a scarlet dress to go with them so now he's wearing dresses he's wearing a scarlet dress which is fine um, on that morning his valet when putting Jack's clothes by after changing them to go a hunting, put his hand in one of Jack's waistcoat pockets and pulled out the little golden snuff box, as poor Jack left behind in a mistake. Oh, it looks to me like Jack's valet, 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 whatever, was a bit of a dirty smelly thief, dirty smelly thief. Looking through his pockets, finding a snuff box, dirty smelly thief. Anyway, they seem to appear everywhere. Watch out for the dirty smelly thieves. And that man opened a little box. And there hopped the three little red men out. Forgot about them. And asked him what he wanted with them. Well, said the valet to them. Or valet. I want this castle to be moved from this far place and moved far across the sea. All right, said the little red man to him. Do you wish to go with it? Yes, said he. Well, get up, they said to him. And the way they went far and far over the great sea. So they moved the castle. Doesn't really go into specifics, does it? It's not, you know. Now the grand hunting party comes back and the castle upon the 12 golden pillars had disappeared to the great disappointment of those gentlemen as uh, they'd not seen it before. I think disappointment would be the wrong word. It more be more like, you're a liar, mate. You said you had a castle. You lied to us. Did you not think we were going to find out eventually? When we were sitting out in a field, eating raspberries. Like, you know, it's like, do you like my castle? No, there is no castle. Oh, we were going to see it. We were going to do blindfold us for the rest of the day. Give us a little guided tour. Tell us where things should be. So the poor little Jack, poor silly Jack, is threatened by taking his beautiful young wife from him, for taking them in the way he did. But the gentleman at last made an agreement with him, and he is to have a twelve months and a day to look for it. And off he goes with a good horse and money in his pocket. So he's sent away to look for the castle. It's quite a big object, isn't it? But anyway, you'd think the question would be how did a castle move all by itself? But no, it's like you've got you've got a year to find it. 
Here's some spending money. Now get on your horse. Make sure you've got your dress on. Now, poor Jack goes in search of his missing castle. Over hills, dales, valleys and mountains. Through woolly woods and sheep walks. Further than I can tell you or e e ever intend to tell you. Until at last he comes to the place where the king of all the little mice in the world lives. The king of all the little mice in the world. There was one of the little mice on sentry at the front gate uh, leading up to the palace. And he didn't try to stop Jack from going in. Oh, he did. Oh, he did. Oh, he did try to stop Jack from going in. Sorry, I got that wrong. He, he asked the little mouse, Where does the, the king live? I should like to see him. This one sent another with him to show him the place. And when the king saw him, he called him in. And the king questioned him and asked him where he was going, what he was up to. Well, Jack told him all the truth. And, you know... He'd lost the great castle, he was going to go look for it, and he had a whole 12 months and a day to find it. And Jack asked him whether he knew anything about it, and the king said, No, nope, but I am the king of the little mice in the world, and I recall them all up in the morning. Maybe they have seen something of it. <laughs> then Jack got a good meal and a bed. And in the morning, he and, his, and the king went on to the fields and the king called all the mice together and asked them whether they had seen the great beautiful castle standing on golden pillars and all the little mice said no there was not one of them that had seen it the old king said to him that you know he had two other brothers one is the king of all the frogs and my older brother who is the oldest he is the king of all the birds in the world and if you go there uh, may, maybe you don't know something about the missing castle. The king said to him, Leave your horse here with me till you come back and uh, take one of my best horses under you and give this cake to my brother. He will know then who you got it from. Uh, mind and tell him uh, I am well and should like dearly to see him. <laughs> And then the king and Jack shook hands together. And when Jack was going through the gates, the little mouse asked him, should he go with him? And Jack said to him, no, I shall get myself into trouble with the king. And the little thing told him, it would be better for you to let me go with you. Maybe I shall do some good for you to some time. Um, for you, be, be, we, you know, without you knowing it, I could help you. I could help you. Uh, you know, uh, you know what I mean? I could do things. Jump, jump up then. And the little round, the mouse ran up the horse's leg and made it dance. And Jack said, we haven't got time for that. Let's just, you know, let's get on a, on a merry way. So they did. Now Jack, after wishing good morning to the king and pocketing the little mouse, which was on sentry, trudged on his way, and such a long way he had to go, he was naked. He was. It took him all to the next day, and at last he found the place, and there was one of the frogs on sentry, and a gun around his shoulder. And did not try to hinder Jack. He did try to hinder Jack from going in. But when Jack said to him that he wanted to see the king. He allowed him to pass. And Jack made up to the door. The king came out and asked him his business. And Jack told him all, oh, you know, from the beginning to the end. The whole story. Well, well, come in. He gets good entertainment that night. And in the morning, the king made such a funny sound and collected all the frogs in the world. And he asked them, did they know or see anything of a castle that stood upon 12 golden pillows? And they all made a curious sound. Rap, 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 and said no. 
Jack had to take another horse and a cake to his king's brother, who is the king of all the fowls of the air. And Jack was going through the gate, fowls, I think, birds. The little frog, so he, he, Jack was going through the gate. The little frog that was on sentry asked John, should he go with him? Why didn't he ask Jack? Anyway, Jack refused for a bit. He said, no. And then he said, oh, just get jump up, it's fine. And uh, Jack put him into his other waistcoat pocket. And away he went again on his great long journey. And the great long story of that great long journey. It was three times as long as this time as it was the first day. However, he found the place and there was a fine bird on sentry guard in the place and Jack passed him and he never said a word to him he talked to the king and told him everything all about the castle well said the king to him you should know in the morning from my birds whether they know anything or not that's a bird sound Jack put up his horse in a stable and then went to bed after having something to eat. And when he got up in the morning, the king and he went to onto the field. And there the king made some funny noises. <laughs> and there came all the fowls that were all in all of the woods of all of the world and the king asked him did you see the fine castle and all the birds answered no well said the king where is the great bird they had to wait then for a long time for the eagle to make his appearance. And when at last he came, all in a perspiration, I think no eagles could sweat. After sending two little birds high up in the sky to whistle on him to make all the haste he possibly could, the king asked the great bird, did he see the great castle? And the bird said, Yeah, I came from like where it is now. I was just like just there. Well, well, said the king. This, this young gentleman has lost it. And you, you must uh, you must go with him back to it to stop. And, but stop till you get a bit of something to eat first. They killed a thief and then sent the best. <laughs> it is a blase sentence. They killed a thief and sent the best parts of it to feed the eagle on his journey over the seas and had to carry Jack on his back. So, the dirty smelly thief, they <laughs> Wow. Now, when they came in sight of the castle, they did not know what to do to get the... Not, not what to do to get the little golden box. Well, the little mouse said to them, Leave me down and I will get the little box for you. So the mouse stole into the castle got hold of the box and when he was coming down the stairs it fell down and he was very very near being caught he came running out with it laughing his best oh, have you got it no sorry that's 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 not jack have you 
Have you got it? Jack said to him. He said, Yes, I have it. And off they went back again and left the castle behind. As they were all of them, Jack, Mouse, Frog and Eagle, passing over the great sea, they fell to quarrelling about which it was that got the little box, till down it slipped into the water. So they were arguing, arguing who was responsible for this heroic act of repossessing the little box with the three little men inside until they got carried away and they dropped it and it fell into the sea went to the water it was by them it was by them looking at it and handling handing it from one hand to the other that they dropped the little box to the bottom of the sea wheel wheel said the frog I knew that I would have to do something so you had better let me go down in the water and they, they, they let him they they let him go he hopped hopped off hop along and he was down for three days and three nights so what was the eagle just what floating for that time three days and three nights and up he comes and shows his nose and little mouth out of the water and all of them asked him did he get it and he told him no well what were you doing there then they asked him nothing at all he said only I wanted to I wanted my full breath and the poor little frog went down the second time and he was down for a day and a night and up he brings it and away they did go after being there four days and nights and after a very long tug over seas and mountains, they were t- tugging, tugging over seas and mountains, um, arrive at the palace of the old king, who is the master of all the birds in the world. And the king is very proud to see them and has a hearty welcome and a long conversation Jack opens the little box and told the little men to go back and to bring the castle here to them. And and then he said, and all of you make as much haste back again as you possibly can. The three little men went off. They said, okay, we're going now to get the castle, okay. See you soon. And they came and they were afraid to go to the gentleman lady. Huh? And when they came near the castle, okay, they got to the castle, they were afraid to go to it until the gentleman and the lady and all the servants were gone out to some dance and there was no one left behind except a cook and another maid with her and the little red men asked them which would they rather go or stop behind and they both said I will go with you and the little man told them to run upstairs quick they were no sooner up there in one of the drawing rooms than here comes just in sight the gentleman and lady and all the servants but it was too late off the castle went at full speed with the women laughing at them through the window (laughs) (laughs) while they made motions of them to stop but all to no purpose they were nine days on their journey in which they tr- did try to keep the Sunday holy when one of the little men turned to be the priest. The other, the clerk, and the third presided as the organ. And the women were the singers for they had a grand chapel in the castle already. Not sure where this is going. Very remarkable 
there was a discord made in the music, and one of the little men ran up one of the organ pipes to see where the bad sound came from. When he found out it only happened to be that the two women were laughing at the little red man stretching his little legs full length on the bass pipes, also his two arms the same at the same time, with his little red nightcap, which he never forgot to wear, and what they never witnessed before could not help calling forth some good merriment while on the face of the deep. That's a long sentence. And poor thing, through them not going on with what they begun with, they very near came to danger, as the castle was once very near sinking in the middle of the sea. At length, after a merry journey, they come again to Jack and the king. The king was quite struck with the sight of the castle, and going up the golden stairs, went to see inside. The king was very much pleased with the castle, but poor Jack's time of the twelve months and a day were drawing to a close, and he wished to go home to his young wife gives orders to the three little men to get ready by the next morning at eight o'clock to be off to the next brother and to stop there for one night. Also to proceed from there to the last or the youngest brother, the master of the mice in the world. All the mice in the world. In such place where the castle shall be left under his care until it's sent for. Jack takes a farewell of the king and thanks him very much for his hospitality. Away from Jack and his castle again and stopped one night in that place away. They went again to the third place and there left the castle under his care. As Jack had to leave the castle behind, he had to take his own horse, which he left there when he first started. Now, poor Jack leaves his castle behind and faces towards home. And after having so much merriment with the three brothers every night, Jack became sleepy on horseback and would have lost the road if it not for the little men a guiding him. At last he arrived weary and tired and they did not seem to receive him with any kindness whatsoever because he had not found the stolen castle and to make it worse he was disappointed in not seeing his young and beautiful wife to come and meet him through behind being hindered by their parents. But that did not stop long. Jack put full power on and dispatched the little men off to bring the castle from there, and they soon got there. Jack shook hands with the king, returned, returned many thanks for his kingly kindness in minding the castle for him, and then Jack instructed the little men to spur him and put speed on speedos and off they went and were not long before they reached their journey's end when out comes the young wife to meet him with a fine lump of a young son and they all lived happily ever after that's the end of the story I go to sleep.